impacts of 60 gigahertz are not widely published information, but here's what I can tell you. And it's in part, ironically, from the promotional material of the big telecom companies themselves. Here it says, 60 gigahertz has a very distinct impact on none other than oxygen itself. Yes, here are the articles released by companies who are touting the benefits of 60 gigahertz. They openly admit that 60 gigahertz is absorbable by oxygen. You can see in this graph here, its impact on oxygen all the frequencies before 60 gig are non-impacted. Then once it hits that frequency, it spikes and becomes hugely absorbed by oxygen. Now in this article by the companies selling products that are going to run on 60 gig, they say that it's going to help its interference levels. Oh, isn't that nice? They don't want your first shooter video games to lag. And most of us know from mainstream releases promoting FIVEG that things like water and trees are going to get in the way of this frequency. Hmm, so how in the world does this even make sense that we are using it? Unless their intentions are something else besides faster speeds. Anyway, knowing that this frequency impacts oxygen, now does it make sense to you how possibly when you mess with the absorption of oxygen in the human body, let me give you one guess which organ is going to suffer first. The way that the 60 gigahertz impacts oxygen is this. Oxygen, the atom, is O. Oxygen, the molecule, is O2. Two atoms together. Now these two atoms creating the oxygen molecule are sharing some electrons. 60 gigahertz causes the electrons surrounding oxygen molecules to spin. Right. Somewhat akin to how high powered microwaves running on 2.4 are impacting molecules in foods such as water. They're heating in part by impacting those molecules to rotate or oscillate with each wave. The movement energy from the rotation of these super tiny water molecules is actually helping to heat the rest of the food. So in a similar way that 2.4 causes H2O to oscillate, 60 gigahertz, even at lower powers, is causing the electrons on oxygen molecules to spin. And as you might imagine, changes to the spin frequencies on oxygen electrons can have impacts on human biology. When you breathe in, the reason that breathing air into your lungs gets oxygen into your blood and therefore in important places like your brain is because the oxygen entering into your lungs gets picked up by a very important iron containing protein called hemoglobin in your blood. But the unfortunate impact of oxygen molecules spinning the electrons is that it makes the hemoglobin unable to uptake the oxygen and get it to the rest of your body. Now, this info was taken from a textbook called Magnetobiology, Underlying Physical Problems. But even beyond this, isn't the fact that the telecom companies are admitting that 60 gigahertz is absorbable by oxygen just stunning information? And shouldn't the fact that 60 gigahertz even fundamentally interacts with oxygen, the most abundant and arguably most important element to all of biological life, be headline news that stops everything until we deeply test the implications of that? If you believe that they must have already tested 60 gigahertz for health and safety, please listen very carefully to what Big Telecom admits when they were asked that very question. Uh, 5G, as you well know, also uses higher frequency waves that don't travel as far and will rely on a network of hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of small cell sites. And the question then is, are there any health implications, any public safety implications? So my question for, for you, particularly Mr. Gillen and Mr. Perry. Thank you, Senator. I, I think, uh, thank you for your focus on the issue. Uh, safety is paramount, and as you alluded to, we rely on the expert agencies, we rely on the findings of the FDA and others as to the requirements to keep all of us safe. Uh, there are no industry back studies, to my knowledge right now. Happy to visit with you as to what uh, opportunities you think there needs to be more studies, and we're always for more science. We also rely on what the scientists tell us. So essentially, the answer to my question, how much money? Zero. Uh, I can so for only follow up with you, Senator. To my knowledge, there's no active studies being backed by industry today. Anybody else know of industry commitments to 
to back research, fund it, support it, to ascertain scientifically the health effect? No, I'm not aware of any. So there really is no research ongoing. We're kind of flying blind here so far as health and safety is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Is this all starting to make sense? What they are calling the CV is acute respiratory disease. And while you can't believe 100% anything coming out of China, it seems to me there were enough leaks of people suddenly falling over in the streets that the CH government doesn't want people talking about or sharing with no other apparent illness. Guys, listen, CV is not new, okay? It's a cold. It's a flu. That's why it says on the side of hand sanitizers like Purell and the side of a can of Lysol that it kills it. It's common enough to be listed on the most common disinfectants. But now the CH government is admitting that people can have virtually no symptoms and suddenly fall over. No symptoms, but then they can still have it. What is it? Lack of oxygen can do that too, right? I mean, let's use common sense here. What happens to you when you have the flu? right? You start to feel bad, achy, you call in sick, you don't want to go outside, you go to lay down in bed, mama brings you some chicken noodle soup, right? Or you just bopping around, fully clothed, doing normal things, and fall over. If your lungs are not able to put oxygen in your blood, how long would it take you to fall over? Not long. 